All right, let's have a quick look at the uh, Ragdoll Export Physics option, uh, an option exclusive to Ragdoll Unlimited, uh, the, the top tier version of Ragdoll. Uh, so for starters, let's just make something real simple uh, so we can get a handle on all that's going on. I'm just gonna make a joint chain and I'm gonna assign some markers to it. So we have a, a tail looking thing. Uh, and so here we go. Now we got a tail, maybe we'll make it flop a bit more. And uh, uh, that looks pretty good. Uh, so now let's say that you were happy with this configuration. Let's say that this configuration, uh, it took some time to do, like you've, uh, you've tweaked these shapes and you've uh, put it like to your liking uh, and you'd, lo you'd like to, to reuse this setup somewhere else or to share it uh, with some other artist. Uh, and that's what you would use export for. So I could go uh, right all export and I can choose, choose some path, say the, uh, my awesome rag file. And the uh, rag file, that's the, the format of this uh, file. And for the technical users out there, is, is this a JSON format? So you can go in there and you can sort of uh, explore the contents of the file and, and use it for other, other things as well. And uh, I'll, I'll touch on that in a different video, but uh, it's a very scalable, very, uh, ex uh, very uh, uh, extensible format, shall we say. Uh, below at the at the very bottom you can see what's going to get exported and you'll see this on the import as well where it maps back to these joints that we're exporting so export uh, it'll tell you how many markers it found so at this point um, if we pretend that we don't have any markers let's say that these joints was your character so i'm going to go uh, just delete everything so now we're back to before we assigned any physics uh, so let's say it's a new scene altogether now you can go import uh, and you can say um, my awesome rag file, and uh, and that's it. So now you, you you get a little screenshot of what to expect, uh, and at the bottom you'll see that these are the markers in the file, and they will map to these joints that you have in the scene. Uh, or in the case of a character, the these controls that you have in the scene. Uh, so now if you look in the if you look in the scene, I click import, bam. Now you, it will have done what you originally did when you set this character up, uh, including the attributes that you set and the sort of sh uh, the shapes, the, the sizes and things. Uh, so let's look at a more complicated example where this is more relevant. So if you had a character, like an actual rig character, let's say we set this character up, uh, and let's say we, we spent like a lot of time on this character. Uh, so if I have, uh, you know, like the arms, and then I have the the legs, and then I have the other leg as well. Uh, so here now we have a now we have our own Randall character. Maybe I'll make him a bit more floppy. You know, maybe 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 too floppy or something like that. Uh, so again, let's say you spend a lot of time setting this character up. Uh, and we're not going to spend all that time now, but <laughs> yeah, I'll let you imagine, like if you did spend a lot of time on this character uh, and you didn't want to have to redo that all the time, especially when you have like stuff like limits uh, that can take a while to set up. So in this case, we only want this axis, something like this. That looks good. And for the elbow, uh, same deal. Uh, something like that. All right, so now we spent you know a significant amount of time on the character, and uh, we'd like to save this work such that it can be reused. There we go. Uh, reused somewhere else. So I'm just going to put him back at the origin, uh, which is not necessarily relevant. Actually, it can be in any pose, um, and when you import it, the character can also be in any pose. So let me demonstrate that. Now I'm going to go export, and I'm going to say this is my. This is my other awesome rag file. Uh, and now at the bottom, you'll see that there's uh, gonna be a few more markers and uh, depending on the complexity of your character, you'll have a ton more. So I'll export that. And uh, that's great. So now we can even, now we can just make a new scene and let's see, reference the character again. Uh, and you know, let's, let's uh, you know, let's reference, uh, let's reference two characters. Uh, let me demonstrate the sort of the namespace option as well. So now we wanna import physics uh, onto these characters. So let's say, for example, this is the one, this is, you know, this is the, the file that we exported, my other awesome rag file. At the bottom, you can see that, okay, uh, it's gonna map to this control. In this case, my namespace is, uh, well, they're a, bit, they're a bit funny, but there's two underscores of a namespace. So we know that this, this is gonna import onto the first character, uh, this one right here. And uh, everything looks good. So if I just hit apply on that, now we've now we've imported physics onto this character, so now now he's he's going to be having the things that we just made, uh, and likewise for the other character, let's just put him in a different pose and maybe let's 
put some, I don't know, animation on him. Uh, because it doesn't really matter the pose that he's in. You're supposed to be able to uh, sort of import this during animation, uh, let's say at the end of a shot that you're working on, and you just want to see what physics would look like with your animation on that character. You notice now we have uh, <laughs> my, my master full animation right here. And let's say at the end he sort of kicks his legs out. Okay, there we go. Uh, so in this case, we want to import it, but we don't want to import it on the original character because, as you can see, these are all they have a little checkbox. You know, it says that this this these controllers they already have a marker assigned to them, so they're occupied. Um, so what we want to do is we want to select a namespace from this list here. We can say um, the the one because we have this is the namespace. So one uh, like underscore one and then underscore again. Uh, that's the namespace. So like when you open this window, it'll populate this little dialog with all the namespaces in your scene. Uh, and if you can't find it, you can also get custom and just type it in yourself. In this case, it did find it. And at the bottom, you can see that if you select the wrong namespace, select this one or that one, it'll be like, I don't know, I don't know where this goes. Right? So this is, a, this is a way for you to confirm what is going to get imported where. And if your character is different, uh, let's, say you have a, let's say you have a generic character that you export physics from, uh, but then when you import it, that character has the, a more complex, like maybe it's a, a sort of a, a more complicated version of the generic one, which with extra controls. Uh, in this case, it will probably it will still apply all the markers to these controllers, uh, but obviously the extra controls were, weren't there. Uh, but then in the opposite case, let's say you assign markers on a very complicated character, but you import it onto a generic character, uh, then they will just show up here as like, I, I found some of them, but uh, not all of them. So in this case, the ground, for example, is not in this scene. So it won't be, it won't be imported. All right, so I can just apply that. Uh, and now we've got two characters uh, with the physics that we, that we applied to just one of them. Uh, so, and, that, and that's really the, the core selling point of export physics. It's a way to, it's a way to, to reuse uh, and reproduce and share these uh, physics contraptions uh, because sometimes you spend a lot of time on them and make them perfect. Uh, so in the case of the mannequin, uh, well, let's just get one more in here. I can show you like a more complete one. Uh, it, it would also store the, um, let's see, do I have it? Uh, it would also store the, uh, the meshes that you make. So like if you have a, um, so let's say this one, for example, uh, this rag file contains the setup that, that was made for the mannequin, but it also contains the comics holes, like the, the, the sort of the, the, mesh, the mesh shapes that you have on it. Uh, so if you made like custom cut up shapes for your character, uh, they will also be contained in this file. So when it imports, uh, you should be seeing, oh, <laughs> now we imported onto the, the wrong character. And you'll notice that undo redo works here. So <laughs> it's like, that's one of the things about uh, importing and referencing and stuff like that. Like normally it just breaks your undo. Here you can totally undo your import. <laughs> so let me select uh, the third namespace that we have now, number two, and it will say number two, and there we go apply. Okay, so you can see that uh, it imported both these, or like the, the clavicle, for example, has a, has a capsule shape, uh, but these elbows has like this mesh shape. And so that can also be quite useful, especially if you make your own cut up versions uh, of the uh, comics halls for your character.